Hi, this is Sue Greenwald. I'm with AwakenStories.com, and I'm here today with Eva Santiago. Hi, Eva. How are you? Hey, hey again. <laughs> <laughs> today, today we're doing an Anything Goes video. Anything Goes video. It's called Dreams, Angels, and Past Lives. Now, that can encompass any other mystical creature, ET, mm -hmm. UFO, encountering you may have had, any cool story. So yeah. I just thought you have had such an interesting life that you probably have a lot of stories that we would like to hear. <laughs> I, I have a few. <laughs> I had to put some in a book, but yeah. I, yeah. I still have some. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes no. when you speak them, it's a little more interesting than yes. writing them. You know, you don't always get the emotion. No, you're um, right. Yeah. No, you're, story. You're, there's something about expressing through video. Yeah. I mean, as a writer, I love the written word, but we're in this age where yeah. video is pretty powerful, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, let me tell you, I can't, I can't remember when it started happening. All I know was that it's the way I've always been, you know, I was always a very curious child. I always asked questions. I irritated people with questions. <laughs> you know, You're not supposed to ask that. Go away. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't care. You know, I was like, well, why not? Why, 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 why isn't it like that? Or, right. you know, you say one thing, but you do another, you know, type deal. And, uh, but I think that one of the, one of my first um, encounters to where I can go, uh, yeah, I was visited, right? Uh, we, because, you know, as a child, you know, it's something special, but I didn't really have anybody to tell. So I, I don't have that recollection. I have stories of people telling me stuff, you know, right, right. But um, like, for example, after my mom, my mother died, um, my oldest brother told me a long time ago, that um, we were at a park playing and she appeared to us. Okay. So, but that wasn't, that's not my, you know, my story, yeah. Yeah. but I, you know, you know what I mean? So, um, but as far as I can remember where I can go, I know I was protected because something bad could have happened was when I was a young woman in um, living in Atlanta, I was by myself, no family, uh, just lived with four roommates, four girls that went to school. I went to school with and I remember doing something really foolish. Um, and I, I was always one of these studious types. I went to school. I wasn't there to party. I couldn't afford the party. I could afford the party life because I was there on my own dime. You know, right, so right. I had to work my ass off to support myself and then go to school. But I remember um, I was living in this apartment with this one girl. And uh, she was gone for the weekend with her boyfriend. So I had the apartment all to myself. And it was spring break. So I had papers. I was catching up on papers and stuff that were due when we got back and stuff. And I remember, so I, that whole weekend, I said to myself, you're not going anywhere. You don't have to work. Catch up on all your work, right? And because I, I, was, I was nerdy like that. <laughs> and uh, so I remember a Saturday afternoon. It had been raining all afternoon. I'd been in my apartment just typing away. And uh, all of a sudden... I heard a knock on the door. Now I didn't, I, I lived in the regular area, not crime ridden, but not the best either, kind of in the middle, right? The pyramid um, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it was just an apartment, a regular apartment. And uh, it was around evening time, the door, somebody knocks on the door. And I didn't even think of it, Sue, okay? I just got up, opened the door and was like, yo, what's up? Really like to this day, I think, man, you anything could have happened I just opened the door to some stranger and there was a stranger there it wasn't a neighbor and it was this tall dude and he was like um kind of like slurring his words so I was like what's up with this guy is he on drugs or something right and uh he goes can, can I use your phone oh mm -hmm. and I was like sure <laughs> and it's not like I had my phone by the door. I had the phone on the kitchen table. So right. he had to come in. Right. And um, I just didn't pay him no mind. I left the door slightly ajar. And I said, yeah, man, where's the phone? I, I sat on the table there and I started, I went back to my work very like more <laughs> focused on what I was doing and not paying attention to the stranger in my house. 
right? <laughs> Who, by the way, didn't ha had a bad energy because I knew it was like this. What's up with this guy? I should have been more aware. Hello, right. Right. this is how these bad things happen. And so, um, so I, I let him in, and then I went back to my work. And all of a sudden, after a couple minutes, he was staring at me intently. Uh -uh. And I'm like, uh, can I help you? You said you needed to use the phone. And he was just like, he, he wouldn't stop looking at me. And as I remember it, Sue, I felt like he was glued to the spot, like he couldn't move, right? And then all of a sudden I said, I snapped out of it. I said, dude, are you using the phone or not? Because you got to go. And then he looks at me. And as soon as I said that, I felt a huge presence with me on the couch. Right. And I was right. like, I felt okay, right? I felt like, and I said, do you got to get the step in? Got to go. You know, this, yeah. you didn't use the phone. And it was, it's like he snapped out of it and he was like, like dazed and goes, oh, okay, uh, and left. <laughs> right? Wow. Wow. So I ran to the door, I locked it and everything. And I was like, what the hell were you thinking? Right. And then all of a sudden, I knew that I knew that I knew in here and in here that there had been an angelic protection. Years right. later, I was shown that, that there had been this huge angel right. on my couch. And that's why that guy just couldn't stop looking. Right, right. He, he was looking past me. Right. He probably he saw the, the energy and the glow and maybe even the form of the angel and it Come flipped me. him out. That's yeah. what I, that's years later, as I'm, as I'm thinking about all this and writing in my book, on writing my book, it was like, no, there, there was this huge angel right beside you. That guy couldn't touch you, right? Right. And so, so it was things like that. Now, another time prior to that, prior to Atlanta, okay, I, I used to party when I, before I got to Atlanta, I took a year off between call, uh, high school and college. Right. And I did. I went to the beach. I was living in a beach town in South Carolina, heavy military presence, uh, Beaufort, South Carolina. It's very, uh, it's the Marine Corps trains there and the Navy has a station there. And uh, I, I was doing what a typical 17 year old would do, you know, just hanging out, working a job, paying my bills and partying. You know? Right, right. And I was living with a very good friend of mine. I, I met this sweet girl. We became fast friends and she, I was 17 and she was 27 with a little boy. And eventually I ended up living with her and she would loan me her car. Okay. Now something happened one night that I knew I was transported home by angels because there's no way I would have made it home how intoxicated I was. And I was, Ooh, right. yeah. So I was yeah. at a friend's house. We started drinking. I was itty bitty. So I, I could get drunk on, you know, with one bottle of beer because right. you know, you're itty bitty. And, but no, that night I drank like a fool and, um, <laughs> I remember grabbing the keys and my friend going, don't go. And I was like, no, I got to get back home because she needs the car in the morning, blah, 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 whatever. I jumped in the car and to this day, I don't know how I got home. Wow. Wow. Because the next day I woke up and I, I was like, I'm home. How, how, what happened? Right. And uh, that was the first time I ever blacked out from alcohol, which was waking me up to this ain't your friend. Okay. This bad things could happen. Yeah. And I was always very much like that. I would learn lessons quickly. Like, yeah, that was a dumb lesson. Like the same guy letting a stranger in my apartment. That was, another, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm a quick steady. I learned quick. Right. So right. I look up, I, the next morning I look out the window and I'm expecting to see, you know, a car or no car or something or the cops. <laughs> and it was like, the car was there. It was parked. The keys were on the table. And I looked at my friend and I was like, how did, how did I get home? Wow. She goes, you don't remember? I said, no, no. And I know it, like I said, years later, I look back on that incident. It was like, no, you were transported home. Wow. wow. You, were, you were kept, you know? Um, and I know I mentioned it last video. I've always been kept Sue. Yeah. The power of source to keep you is, and I'm and anybody who's been orphaned because in the Bible, one of my favorite verses, it says that source daddy looks after the orphans and the widows. And I, that's it's near and dear to me because I have known that personally. Right, right. I've known about the keeping power of source, you know, and it, 
that's the story of my life. If you want to summarize my life, that girl right there, she knows about what it's like to be kept by source, like, you know, under the pinions of his wings or whatever, you know, I know, I know that keeping power and it's, it's what's covered me, my children, my grandchildren, because that's generational, you know, it's it not is just very food. exciting. It yeah. Bends out, you yeah. know, yeah. and it's eternal, yeah. right? It's yeah. forever and ever. So, so you, the fact that you were kept so carefully must mean yeah. you have big missions to accomplish, which you have done throughout your life already. You've yeah. really come like, you know, like I said, you were given lemons, you made lemonade out of it. You're, you're getting, it, everything's getting better and better. And you've helped so many people along the path, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. It's so exciting. I appreciate you saying that. Um, then I wanted to talk about, about a little bit about um, how my my parents and my one my grandma, so it would be my paternal grandmother, have been those people I've considered angels, even though I know right. they're not. But right. they've gone on, but they've protected me from that side. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So after I remember when I was in South Carolina, I have a black and white picture of like portraits of each of my parents and I have one of him and one of her and uh those pictures I was you know when I was anxious about going to Atlanta by myself I'm 17 years old I'm picking up I'm going to Atlanta to college I don't know a soul in Atlanta okay and I was scared in my last few days in South Carolina I started like the last few months when it was wrapping up I was getting ready to go to the you know to a new mission and I was scared and I remember the first time my father spoke to me through his portrait. His eyes were moving. It was, it was like, it came alive, that picture, you know? And I remember I would go, I could not wait to go home. And I would sit there and I'd look at that picture and just, he was there, right. you know, comforting me, telling me right. it's gonna be right. okay, you know? And, um, and I've had the same thing um, happen with my mother but my mother has shown up in, in dreams, in the other reality, and what right. they tell us dreams, right? Right, right. Um, there's been times where I've needed a comfort, and I never knew her. There's been times where I've needed a reassurance as a woman, as a mom. And she showed up once for me in that and what I needed, right? And it was, um, it was a Christmas that was, I was really sad because... You know, we were traveling around already in the travel trailer. My marriage was, you know, not in good shape, all this stuff. And I had three little kids I was looking after. And um, that Christmas, we didn't have Christmas presents, physical ones, but daddy gave me a huge present. And that was, you know, allowing me to see my mother in that dream. And she showed up uh, as I would imagine that she would look like now, you know, and she was just there watching me and totally comforting me and telling me what good job I was doing with my kids. You're going to make me cry. It was so vivid. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you what she was wearing. She was wearing yeah. like this blue top with these blue slacks and she was always very stylish, you know, and, and she was, oh my God, she was telling me, yeah, and you're going to do more and I'm proud of you. And I've never heard that from a, you know, from, the, the person that raised me, I always long to hear that from her, but, right, right. you know, and here my mother is coming to me from the other side going, you got it, kid, you know? That's big stuff. That's no, big, especially, and, and you know, with these lucid dreams, it's a feel. You Not only do you see the visual, yeah. you know, the co color, like what she's wearing or whatever, it's a feeling there yeah. as well. And when you wake up, you were probably like feeling awesome and maybe even crying a little bit because yeah. it's so vivid. I was so touched. And then that was the beginning because, yeah. because she showed up, her spirit showed up to let me have, to um, assist me in my right. home birth. And I was having my fourth baby at home. I told you all of that. And uh, right at transition, when it's the hardest part of the labor, um, all of a sudden I, I, I turn into that, like this little girl. And I started talking to my mother who was right there. Right. And I was like crying out to her, you know, and um, my midwife was there. My husband was there. My kids were there. And it was one of those moments, a second time where 
I I knew she was there and she was right. there to help me and she right. saw me through, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's why I, I named my second daughter after her. Um, I gave her her middle name because I was like, no, my mom, my mother was here, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I have, I have a, I have a, a theory. I've, I've told my kids over and over because they lost their father two years ago. Right. 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 And they, and at the end of his life, uh, he, he was 20 years older than me. So he was 70. Right. And at the end of his life, he couldn't help. And I knew he, because he was sick too so he his life was dwindling away and he wasn't as strong right and I just remember the other day my son came up to me he's 24 so he lost his dad at 22 and the other day he's like um mom it's great that he pops up in my dreams I mean yeah he comes in my room all day long and if I'm sleeping he'll sleep for hours and wake up and tell me, um, I was just saying, <laughs> all right. And he goes, but he was sad. He was extra sad that day. Something happened. And he goes, it's great, mom. But, you know, I, I want him here. And I have to remind him, honey, he couldn't help you here. Like right. he's helping you from that side. That is right. very real. Right. And just because you can't, he's not here to physically hug. Right. Oh, they're here. Right. You can't so discount that. When you, when you say your father talked you through the, his photo, I think this was before you went to college. Did you hear words? Did you just have a knowing? So you heard words. I heard words. I heard him. Um, and it was funny because it wasn't in Spanish. <laughs> he was talking to me in English. I mean, he never knew English because he was from Colombia. Right, right. And I was, like, I was going, oh, you speak. And I speak Spanish. So it wasn't like that. It was, but he was, he was talking in words and I could see. I could see his mouth moving like, wow, like, like cool. you and me, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I had to keep this to myself because it was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I told my girlfriend that I was living with at the time, her name was Teresa. I said, I told her about it because she, she understood the supernatural and she, she walks up to that picture and she was like, this picture was talking to you. And I thought she was going to laugh at me. She goes, good. You need it. And then left and left. wow, how cool is that? <laughs> right? That reassurance. So yeah. I, I might have already written this in my on my blog website, but there um mm -hmm. I don't know if you know who Padre Pio is. He's a he's a Catholic saint, but okay. he was very spiritual. He, they were actually gonna kick him out of the church, but he was very spiritual, like he bilocated and he was really into healing and he had stigmata and blah blah blah. Right. So he had all these things, but the, the Catholics didn't like him, but the people loved him. Yeah. So where my first yoga studio was about five miles away was a, a Padre Pio center and there were statues and all over. And um, I took like groups of people, I call them field trips. So we would do like kind of a little tour and we'd kind of like um, into it and we'd add the meditations and it, it was a cool day. Yeah. 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 So there was a life-size Padre Pio statue and I forget exactly how his hands were. I think they were like this. Mm -hmm. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Like his hands are like this. And um, so my friend Stacy and I go up and we each have a hand and we're like kind of looking down and I don't know, we're praying or whatever. I am not religious just for the record. Oh, but I know. <laughs> this, the yeah. statue came alive. I, I mean, you had to be there because I yeah. looked up and I went like, <gasps> like, yeah. oh my God. Cause it, in, you know, it went from a different color and yeah. it moved, the statue moved. Yeah. And me and Stacey, we went like, Whoa! and we looked at each other. Then we looked down a couple of times. We didn't know what to do. And then it turned back into a statue again. Wow. All right. Real story. Yeah. I mean, so that kind of stuff happens. You get these messages from unexplicable sources or whatever. And that really wasn't maybe a message, but I felt the energy as well. I think, look, um, it's a message because it's something that you needed. At yeah. that time. If it yeah. comforted you, if you were whatever state of mind you were in and you feel better, yeah. it's a message, you yeah. know? I mean, we, we get so caught up with the way it's supposed to be. Right. And it's right. like, no, it was, it was source using whatever vehicle he wants to okay exactly. yeah. to get to you and and it yeah. was effective right? right um one of the things 
I'm very open-minded and, and I've always been open-minded and that's why I think I know uh, in some circles, it's like, who is she kidding? Or <laughs> who is she, she is, are you, she, mm, she I, dances. I, 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 I know she dances to manifest the angelic things happening up there. <laughs> She's lost it, right? Or no, 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 who does she think she is? I'm like, I don't have to think I know. I, I know what I do and why I'm here. But anyway, I wanted to tell you something about the <laughs> message. Um, it, it's really it, back to angels. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, I wrote down some notes because I wanted to come prepared to this because yeah. I prepare, you know, because sometimes yeah, the, you have to, yeah, you know, yeah. that way we, we can get to the, you know, to the core of what we want to talk about, right. you know, right. so, um, so another angelic visitation that I had was when I was pregnant with Elena. It was 19, uh, 1994. And it was, it was around this time, May, April, May. And I was already showing belly. And of course, mind you, I felt all alone. I didn't, I didn't have my parents. I didn't have uh, another, an older woman to go to an older sister. It was just me. Right. right. And my right. husband, that was it. And I was working at a museum in Atlanta, a history museum. And um, it was an afternoon after lunch, and the, it was it was dead time at the museum that day, middle of the week. And no, actually, I, I know because we had church night that night because we would go to Wednesday churches, and I, that night I went and told all about it. And so it was it was that time of day, and I saw two beings walk into the museum. And I was sitting in the in the gift gift shop. I was the manager of the gift shop of that museum. And it was just uh, me and a, a good friend of mine sitting at the chair and two beings came in and they were tall. Sue, so I had to go like this, <laughs> were these tall ass people. <laughs> and I remember one made a beeline to me cause I was at the register, standing at the register and the other one like disappeared into the museum part, mm. you know? And I never went, uh, sir, you didn't pay. I was like, who cares? He went in there to check it out. I don't, I, I, I didn't, <laughs> I, it didn't occur to me to stop him, right? <laughs> but then after a minute, I, I had to check myself and go, where's the other guy? I know two people walked in here, right? And I remember the one that approached me at the, cat, uh, the, at the register, I remember what he wore. He wore, uh, you, you know, those really colorful exercise suits of the 90s? <laughs> like yeah. the, the uh, velour or whatever yeah. no yeah. And, and they make that sound sh 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 that that oh that, the parachute pants that, those those yeah and that very colorful and a baseball cap that covered everything I mean it because he Ooh. had it lowered and so I could not see his face yeah Mind you, and I'm getting Whoa. a sense of this guy is tall as hell right yeah and um so I also remembered that he sounded funny like not English and I'm very good at picking up accents because I've studied languages you know so it wasn't from any language that I could remember right that you know wasn't Russian it wasn't Spanish Italian Greek none of that I'm going okay this guy so I had a sense that he wasn't from here from the get-go okay so then he puts up I don't remember seeing his hands either because all of a sudden he put a change on the on the counter and he was gonna buy a couple postcards, right? And he <laughs> on, the thing, on the counter and he says to me, miss, uh, can you help me count this money? I'm not familiar with the currency. And I was going, okay. So blah, 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 I'm counting his change and everything, his money. And all of a sudden he says, uh, it wasn't a question. It was more like he already knew, right? And I wasn't big. Uh, pregnancy wise, I, I was, I, I stayed really small with Elena. So, and people would tell me, man, you don't even look pregnant. Are you pregnant? Right, right. And so he says to me, ah, so um, this is your first child. And I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, uh, uh, like I'm stumbling, like, oh yeah. <laughs> he goes, um, and, uh, and you're excited. I said, of course, yeah, I'm really happy, blah, blah, blah. And then there was a pause and then he, he left me with the message that was supposed to, I was supposed to hear that day was, everything is gonna be okay, don't worry. Wow, okay? wow. And I went, 
Uh huh. I was like, the, uh huh. And he grabbed his postcards and left. As 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 quick as it began the encounter, he left. Okay. Uh, so all of a sudden, I look back. My friend was there, so there was a witness. Right. Okay. And I looked at her and I said, Margaret. She goes, baby. And she was she's an older she was an older woman woman. She goes, baby, you were just visited by an angel. Wow. I'm and getting I, chills. Yeah. Chills. And I said, I said, right. And she goes, yeah. She goes, because you know the Bible says about, you know, uh, sometimes we entertain angels and we're not even aware. Yeah. It, right. Yeah. Well, honey, as soon as she said that, I bolted out the door, you know, my pregnant self running out to catch this person. And I'm like looking like this was seconds after I left. I'm looking up and down that uh, the the whole expanse of the of, of the street. And I, I ran up and I ran down. I checked around the corner. That man was gone. Wow. And I came back and I told I told my friend and she goes, no, nah, that was an angel, baby. That was an wow. angel. Right As here. you said that, I totally got chills on that. At first, I was going to say extraterrestrial, you know, like right out of the movies because you can't see the face or whatever. <laughs> But how cool is that? But I'm, of course, going to the negative. Like, I'm thinking of all these movies where they come in and take over, you know. <laughs> You're still well, here, though. <laughs> no, I, I, and then, of course, that I that never left me, you know. And right, then, right. I went to church that night, and I told everybody about it. And they were like, oh, my God, that's really cool. Because it was one of those uh, charismatic churches. And, you know, they believe in, they're open more yeah. often. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, no, it was, it was wonderful. It was just like, you know, and then I knew I've known that I've known all my life that these things, you know, have happened to me. I might not, I'm not, might not have the recollection, but you mm. know, it didn't just start happening all of a sudden. Now it's like, I can remember, I can tell you all about yeah. it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then um, there was a time, an another person that shows up in my dreams is my abuelita. Um, that's Spanish for granny. And she was my father's mother. And she was super spiritual. Um, I would sit there and not have to talk to her because she, she would sew on her sewing machine. And man, we conversed all the time. It was like to this day, you know, like whenever she's shown up in my dreams too. Right, right. I'll pick up conversations right where we left off. You know, matter of fact, um, I saw her in a dream, so many children. So four months before she passed away, before she transitioned, I woke up from a dream. I was already married. Um, and I remember being on this platform and she's getting on the train and I'm going, Abuelita, let me come with you. And she was like, no, baby girl, you, you gotta stay. You're, it's not Ooh, your time. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. Please let me come with you. It was, and, and the doors opened, she stepped in. I went to step in and she said, you can't. I have to go, you can't. And I'm crying. And when I woke up, I woke up crying real tears. Right, right. And, and then my husband was like, well, what's the matter? What was wrong? And I told him, he goes, we gotta go. We gotta go see her, you don't know, right? And so we went down to Panama City, which is where she was living. And uh, yeah, that was the last time I saw her. Wow. wow. I need to go. Uh, no, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes um, back to the messages, you know, I, I can't stress enough that spirituality has to do with our creativity. And you've got to be open to however way source wants to manifest. Right. You know what I mean? And it's sad because like I, I saw my kids when they were growing up, they were all very, you know, awake, all of them, you know, my, my youngest one would sit there on the kitchen floor like this with her crayon. What are you doing, baby? I'm drawing that guy. And it would, it would be something that looked like an angel, like a wing or something, you know, things like that. And I saw that as they grew up, you know, you, they, you do, you start losing that. I mean, we live in the, well, the matrix is broken, but before, before that, it just, it was sad to start seeing them. They get to be a certain age and then it's like, it's not the same. Well, I'm easy. sure, I'm sure you didn't squelch their beliefs no. or whatever. And, you know, since they didn't have outside teachers, they didn't, but I think just being busy in society has a society. Big yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. Yeah. Um, because look, um, 
one of the coolest things that we ever saw happen. Oh, and by the way, my youngest, she saw my angel. She saw my guardian angel. Remember I told you Kim Clement came to Vegas yeah, in yeah. 2000 and he spoke and all that. Well, during the service, um, cause he always, he was a musical prophet. If you know anything about him, he had to have music to prophesy and to give words to people and his services, the worship in his services was just like nothing I'd ever experienced ever. And I don't think I ever will because he was that open, you know? And I remember me and my kids were dancing because he was there on his piano, just, you know, going crazy and all this stuff. It was just such a celebra uh, celebratory energy, that right, right. worship. And all of a sudden, my youngest daughter comes up to me and she goes, mama, who's that lady? And I'm like, what lady, baby? And we were over there in a the corner, you know, away from the people in the sanctuary, but away from the, you know, and she goes, mama, there's this lady following you. Ooh. And I looked at her and I said, I'm getting chills again. And I said, what does she look like, baby? Cause I couldn't see. And she goes, she, she looks like, like, an, like, well, we, we say native, native American. She goes, she looks like an Indian. And mm. she goes, she's wearing feathers and stuff. And Sue, I was like, and then a few days later, she came up to me and described Again, she goes, mom, really, there was this lady right next to you and she was following you because you were dancing and all this stuff. And, and she stayed with you the whole time. Is that your angel, mama? And I was told, yeah, that that was. Wow. Yeah. I'm getting chills on that. So that is super cool. Super cool. And she was like, my youngest was six years old when yeah. that happened. Yeah. And I was like, dang. And so and so what's cool was because they grew up in a space where they were allowed to express, you know, the spiritual. Um, I remember there were times, and they can tell you because to this day, it's like, what was that? There were times where I would be homeschooling them. We would be just, they would be doing their schoolwork or I would be talking to them. And there would be times where you could see, I can't, I don't know how to describe this to you. And I hope my words will convey it. But we would see like a shadow went over the house. The first time that ha happened, I look up, we look up and, I'm, and I made a silly comment and my kids are like, really, mom? I said, maybe that was an airplane. Mom, that had to be a huge airplane <laughs> to come that low to the house. And we didn't hear it, which is so shallow. Right, <laughs> right. <a> bird, right? <laughs> and, and then we're all laughing and that would happen. That would happen consistently. Just this big shadow. And it, 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 it was fleeting, like, whoa, wait, what? but we all saw it, you know? And then there was another time where we were inside, we were, we were listening and, uh, to music and uh, it rained indoors. You could feel drops of water coming. Wow. In. And we were like, D -d -d the windows aren't open, the fan was going, but we felt sprinkles of, of water inside. And, and I was like, did, did anybody feel that? And my kids are like, hey, who sprinkled water? <laughs> what is this, <laughs> right? And it was just another, hey, we're here. You're wow, wow. And mm -hmm. the fact that you all witnessed the same thing at the same time, that's super Yeah, and they, like yeah. I said, they were little, so they weren't cynical. Yeah. They yeah. weren't like, oh, there yeah. goes mom again with her crazy talk, you know? Yeah. And it's cool because like so they went through their teen years and all that stuff but as now that they're like i said their dad has departed to the other side uh it's bringing them back now more to that because they're like oh my god i see dad in my dreams uh oh my dad my dad shows up here and dad does you see what i'm saying right yeah and it warms my heart because they're back to that that childlike state that, yeah you know that yeah. this childlike trust that you have to have that to know that this isn't all there is, guys. And if you think, then I'm sorry, but you're very, you're you're limited. O open open your right. eyes. You it, it, it really but, gives you uh, um let you have less fear in your life. I mean, yes. um, you have less fear and more I, I don't know boldness, more ease. If if you think that you know your life is over, you're going to be afraid to make mistakes or whatever because you don't want to get hurt or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people are going through right now, where if you know that you'll be, you know, living 
a really long, maybe forever life yeah. and or maybe the body will die, but the spirit goes on. That's really a comfort so that yeah. all your experiences, yeah, you know, it doesn't go to waste. Nothing goes to waste, you know? No. And that's, that's why I feel like, you know, when, when I share my story about my life and people look at me like, just by looking at you, that's the last thing I would have expected, <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, good, because, you know, there's too many people where they're suffering badge right yeah, here, yeah. Oh, you know, and you don't want to be that guy. You want to be that overcomer, that victorious, yeah. you totally. Know? Yeah. You know what I mean? You, I yeah. mean, there's enough sub stories to go around, honey. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. But you have to understand that that was not, it wasn't, what that saying that said uh the old saying whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger exactly that's and my I, saying <laughs> and it makes you and let's take it a step further sue it yeah. makes you a, makes you victorious yes right yeah. i mean right. that's the only reason i mean i i look at people and it, it's like you have a choice um kim clement used to say this and i and to this day i adopted it as my own and i you know i give them credit where it's due but he used to say, you have to learn to reign from your place of pain. Reign, R-E-I-G-N. Mm -hmm. Reign from your place of right. pain. Right. Because see, pain has to, pain, you can let it destroy you or you can use it. And then I'd rather use it to help others. Right. right. You know? Well, your life story really shows how you did, you know, you, you were smart. All <laughs> right. And very motivated. So you took a situation. It wasn't ideal. But you, you flipped it. You flipped it each time. I mean, you could have stayed the victim. You could have wallowed. You could have become, you know, an addict. Whatever. You know, it doesn't even matter. But instead of that, you you got, you, you realize, okay, these are the facts. You know, suff, you know suffering isn't going to benefit anyone. Mm -hmm. And you let it go. Mm -hmm. You became stronger and smarter. And, you know, we all have to like, sometimes like sit on the couch and cry and boo-hoo and- Of course, you know, I did not sure. Yeah. And, yeah, so we all have that, but um, like most of us don't have the giant issues that you've had. And, um, yeah. you know, we have, to, we have to use where we are and think, where do we want to be and how do we want to be? What can I do to make myself better? Maybe try something out of our comfort zone or, you know, confide in someone. It, it doesn't even matter what it is. But right. rather than sit there and boo-hoo the rest of your life, you know, that's a waste. It that does is. no one any good, you know? And not only that, but we came, you're here for a reason. Right. And it's not to be a victim. Right. And I, I hate to say that, but a victim mentality is you being a thief, okay, first of all, because you're robbing because of, of, of your victim mentality, you're robbing yourself, right? And then you, you locked up with your gifts, okay? So then you can't give that to humanity. Right. So then, you know, so then you're a thief, right? right. Because right. you robbed humanity of your best. You robbed you of your best and everybody else, you right. know? And it's like, oh, uh, and that's the way I see it. I'm like, well, I came here for a reason and whatever was put in my path right. was for my betterment. Right. And we're supposed to be happy. Happiness is a vibration, a frequency. Yeah. Okay. So anger, fear, you know, all those lower or negative, they've measured all of this and they can even rank them, but happiness, love, Mm -hmm. um, gratitude. Those are the highest vibrations. So totally. if you can, if you can go and I, I think Abraham Hicks teaches this too. If you can go from, you know, fear or whatever, and just raise your vibration a little bit in little baby steps, even to get to neutral and then to get to higher, 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 doing the things you love, being with people you love, mm -hmm. doing whatever makes you happy. Um, that, ripples out to other people around you it sets yeah. an example but you benefit the world that way as well as yourself you know absolutely and and, and good things cannot come to you when you're in the mm -hmm. negative lower vibrations mm -hmm. so if you're in fear and anger and all this other stuff the good things can't get in no mm -hmm. um no absolutely because like begets like right 
Right. And that's a law. That's a spiritual law that whatever you're going to put out there for right. good or for bad, you better make sure it's good. Right. Right. I mean, and bad things are going to happen anyway because it, they're they're part of life. But when the bad things do happen, they don't destroy you because right. you have that mindset of, okay, what's the lesson in this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And there is a lesson. Okay, let me go le- learn it. So I don't yeah. have to do this shit again. <laughs> the, the more the more you start like you have an issue, let's say it, a problem, a concern, whatever, and you figure it out. But if you can figure out and see the lesson and of course, learn the lesson, or at least awareness is the first step. Okay. Mm-hmm. Be aware that this is a lesson. I keep doing the same thing. It's not getting me the re- right results. And then maybe changing what you do or how you yeah. behave. You're just going to go upward from there. And every time you learn a lesson, it's off the table now there's always a never ending list of yeah. lessons, yeah. but the more you can tackle them and handle them, the easier life will be, the yeah. easier the next lesson is going to be. Yeah. And um, I mean, like I've gone through a lot of hard lessons and I'm stubborn and I've done stupid things. Well, everyone has, yeah. but the more I recognize the lesson and what I can do to recover and benefit from the lesson and I, I want the lessons. I, I kind of want them to be easy, <laughs> but they do get easier, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have to talking about victim mentality. Um, yeah. It was funny because back in 90, 91, 92, I met up with one of my sisters, um, one of my blood sisters, and I love her dearly, but I remember she freaked me out because of the way she was talking. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my sister comes to visit me, and she is like, um, she was talking from a victim mentality that was freaking me out, okay, because I was, mind you, I was learning about what happened in the past, and so at that point, you're also being given an option, right, which are you going to, are you going to get healed or are you going to become a victim? So my sister shows up at my doorstep. We get to talking. Now, mind you, before our mother died, our mother was disabled in a wheelchair briefly, but that's the way she remembers her. I don't have any recollection of that. I was too little. Right. Um, and so my sister said that, oh my God, I'm so, um, I'm so depressed. Our mom was depressed and I'm so depressed that by the time I'm 35, I see myself just like she was in a wheelchair. Oh. Sue, I went, that doesn't sound right to me. Now, mind you, I was really young, right? But there was something in my heart going, I don't think mama would have wanted us to repeat her history, right? And uh, so the more I hung out with my sister, yeah. she had this uh, wrong with her and she had that wrong with her and she had everything and I didn't I couldn't see it but right right. I could see that a lot of it was in her mind right exactly exactly so all these years later you know I uh she comes in and out of my life and I see her the same way there were there were years where she has not spoken to me because she fell into you know a black hole of depression like she would call it and I'm like okay I understand that no disrespect to the people with the depression, not none of that. Okay. But I could see how she kind of enjoyed the, you know, uh, I'm just going to disconnect and uh, make it about me and uh, all that stuff. Right. I'm like, okay, dude, but I'm, I'm, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm living. Okay? It's clear that after 30 something years, she hasn't learned the lesson or she hasn't gotten a grip. She's no. still in victim mode. She's blaming everything on, you know, your mother, your parents death. And it's it's sabotage because it's not allowing her to live her life. No, and, and not here, allowing happiness. Here's the, here's the crazy part. So she got angry when she saw the manuscript in my book. She threw it down. She read half of it, right? And I I I didn't take any offense to it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's yeah. gonna be people that don't like my stuff. I'm okay, you know. But she threw it down very aggressively, and she said, "I live this shit. Why would I want to read about it?" right? And I'm like, Ooh, wow, (laughs) she was mad. Right. And so I, I, I I collected it all and I put it away during that visit. And then all these years later, I catch up with her like two, three years ago. Right. And 
oh, I'm still this and I'm still oh. that and da, da, da. And, and she's made some strides, right? But it's still the, you know, the cloud, the perpetual cloud of rain type deal. And I'm sorry, Sue, I didn't come here to suffer. Okay, I've suffered, but I didn't come here to live out an existence of right. suffering. Right, right. No, and, and that's why I ran from religion, because some religions teach you that, you know, suffering, uh, sickness and all that is, you know, worshiping God. And I'm it's like, it's worthy. It's a, you're, like, you're a worthy person if you suffer. Yeah, no, Wrong. I'm sorry. No, yeah. um, I don't see it that way. You know, yeah. what good is what good am I? If, you know, if, if the light of source cannot come through me and I become a vehicle of, you know, his power to help somebody else, then what the hell good am I? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's that simple. Now I wanted to tell you something real quick. Um, that's pretty cool. Cause, okay. um, so more about the angelics. Um, I just remembered one thing two years ago, like around the fall. Um, there came a big, and you know, we live in the desert. So those gusts of wind, sometimes there's something going on in that wind. You just got to stop and go, oh, you know, and you, I've closed my eyes and go, oh my God, that was a battle. There's this battle going on. Yeah. 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 But I was in my kitchen. Now I don't have a kitchen window, but I have windows in my dining room. And so I can see out. So I was washing dishes and all of a sudden this gust of wind comes up. And I look up and for several seconds, I saw this massive being that looked like a transformer <laughs> in my backyard, right? And I was like, oh my God. And I looked, I looked up and I looked at him and I'm in my kitchen. Right. He's outside. Right. And he, goes, and he says this, don't worry, we're securing the premises. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So did you hear his voice or hear it inside your head? I heard it was, it was audible. Physical like, voice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay. And then he was like, and, and I'm like, oh my God, I just, I just saw a transformer. <laughs> and, just like, and it was like, he was like, he was like, not, uh, not even bothered. Right. Like, Hey, don't worry, little lady. We got you. We're just securing everything around here. And, and it was like that, you know? Wow. And then there was another time that was even crazier. And I want to talk about forgiveness because forgiveness opens you up to miracles. Okay. Now, after my kid's dad died, um, we talk all the time. We are like the closest that we, even though we divorced, we are like the closest we've ever been. And the key to that is forgiveness. Okay. And moving on. Right. And doing the healing, all of that. But I'm going to tell you one time, when um, that fall after he transitioned, I was in the backyard and all of a sudden, right in front of me, this giant dove like came in front of me. Like I was here and my patio was in front of me and that dove flew before me, hovered and disappeared. And I said, that's you, David, huh? He goes, I heard him laughing. He goes, yep. So and cool. I, I was glued to the spot. So I was like, so David's a dove. Oh my God, he's ascended. He's like promoted. You know, he's gone on for real here. You know, the physical is gone, but there was his spirit right in front of me. He right. looked dove, right? right. And um, we had our problems. We had, you know, things we battled with together. He had his demons, all this stuff, you know, years I wrote about stuff um, that happened, you know, in the relationship. But I came to terms with this man that I was with for 25 years and I chose, I chose forgiveness because, you know, that way, and this is what I was explaining to my son the other day, I said, um, I chose forgiveness because I wanted to be able to show up for him at the end. Now, imagine if I was bitter, if I was full of unforgiveness and bitterness toward him, right? 
imagine, then at the end, I would have bailed. Like, hey, guys, right. you here. No, but I couldn't do that to my kids. Right, right. I could not do that to my kids, Sue, because it was like, I'm, I'm like, the, I'm like, I'm the matriarch of this family. Right, exactly. exactly. And so that's why when he manifests, I can see him because there's no, there's no veil anymore. There's that forgiveness took away all that, you know, and it was mutual. It, it was, he obviously, you know, cause it takes two to tangle, you know, right, right. we hurt at each other. We hurt each other. Um, but having healed it here, that's why right. it's so important. You got to come to terms with things here because you're going to have to, you're going to face them again and again well, and again and again. I, I don't, I don't think the average person would go into a marriage wanting to hurt the other person. No. You know, yeah, I mean, like no. the average, the average person. That's has, not the aim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The average person doesn't have that, you know, evil uh, mm -hmm. desire, if you will. But, you know, sometimes it does happen and it can get pretty ugly, you yeah. know? And I don't know, you know, specifically what happened in your situation, but what are some of the ways you tried to forgive him or you did forgive him? What well, are the things that you would do to help facilitate that? Well, let me tell you something. Understanding his history helped me a lot. Yeah. We were both broken as kids. Right. Mm -hmm. So that I knew that his unforgiveness was tainting my marriage. Right. was teasing our family so it was that curse coming down the pike again right and right. i was going no i i can't have this i've i've healed this part of the ancestry part of the family line okay you have to too and i would tell him that and he was so hurt and so much in pain and wouldn't let it go that i knew i was instrumental in his life to go honey um it's going to ruin everything you have, everything that's beautiful that we've built together. Right, right. It's going to be ruined by that past. Right. And he would look at me like, okay, I get it, but um, I'm not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> because, because it was a choice of his will, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like I chose to, um, to forgive him and to forgive everybody in my past. Cause I had to go back down that way right. and forgive everybody that had ever, you know, thrown anything at me or hurt mm -hmm. me. And so it began with, you know, forgiving. Like, and I think I told you last time I had to forgive myself. Right. Right. And I had to forgive source because for a long time I was like, mm -hmm, yeah, great. So you made me an orphan. Great. You know, that <laughs> <laughs> I don't deserve this. <laughs> right. And then I had to, so, and then I had to forgive everybody, not just right. some people, right. Everybody. I remember, I remember being talking to my counselor one day and she says this to me, well, you know, you got to forgive the child molester. And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't want to. I remember I, I was full of spit and vinegar. No, I don't want to. I sat there and I told her that. And she goes, honey, if you don't, you're still tied to him. Right. He doesn't think about you. He, the, the, when they hurt us, they don't think about us. Okay. And here we are tormenting ourselves over and over. Oh, what they said and what they did and da, da, da. Right. And so I had to choose. Right. Okay, what's up? Do I want to be like this, tied to that? Those. Two? I'm getting chills again. Yeah, yeah. Or do I want to go? Okay, uh, I'm free and I'm and, strong. And I, had to, I had to ask Source to give me the strength and the faith to forgive them. Couldn't right. find that in myself anywhere, Sue. It was. I was like, oh, it, nah. is it anywhere in here? <laughs> I don't see it. It wasn't there, and I had to go. Literally, I went my I went by myself and I said, okay, all right, how am I supposed to do this? Because I don't feel it. Well, forgiveness is not a feeling. Forgiveness is a powerful force, right? And this counselor told me something. She said, look, I know what's going on in your mind. You think because you forgave, you got to go back under that. She said, I said, I don't. She goes, no, you forgive them and you move on. If they ever want to come back and truly show reconciliation and truly want to, you know, make amends with you, great. She and she looked at me. She goes, "By the way, it doesn't happen too often, so you know, be okay with it, right?" Right. right. 
And I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, forgiveness is for you a thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, and, and here's, you know, there's a, several sayings about forgiveness, but one is if you are willing to forgive, let's say you don't know how, but you say, okay, I'm willing to forgive this person for whatever they've done. That's the first step. You'll be shown the way. And it's, it might be layers. It might be layers and layers of pain that come out. Maybe you have to write them a letter that you never send. Yes. Maybe you have to talk to them because they, they could be dead. We don't know where they are, but you oh, have I, to get it. I've written those letters. Yeah. Have. You have mm -hmm. to get it out of you and it's for your benefit. You're not condoning what they've done. They've hurt you and they may or may not have been had the awareness of what they were doing. Completely. Right? But but that did give you growth. I hate to say it that way, you know, but <laughs> it's made you strong mm -hmm. and smart. Well, right? yeah. So just I, be willing to forgive. And, I'm willing. Uh, yes. And yeah. okay. Because there, there's a, there's an energy behind that willingness. Right. Just right. like, okay, I'm not willing to forgive. I'm willing to forgive. Right. Yeah. I had a friend of mine a few years ago, she knew me and uh, she knew my situation, this sweet, dear lady. And uh, one day we were talking about this and she goes, Eva, I hate to tell you, but you're full of shit. <laughs> I, said, I said, okay, lay it on me. I've been so bad and I'm okay, right? Yeah, yeah. She said, after everything that you told me that you went through as a child and what the things that you went through as an adult with your husband, there's no freaking way that you forgave somebody like that. And then I, re I looked at her and I said, uh, as I'm telling you here, I, don't, I have. And she goes, well, you know what? Good on you, but I would never, Ooh. ever. Yeah. Right. So then she's telling me about her heart's condition. Right. Because as stories go, when you share a story, you know, it's going to connect in some kind of way to the hero of your story. And then all of a sudden I felt very bad for her. I was like, oh, you know, and then she started telling me her story. Yeah. And I was going, well, honey, I got to tell you this, but the only way out of that mess Right. Is you got to forgive, you know, right. and I never told her that because she wasn't in that space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Around, but, you know? but, but you know what I used to teach people and I've done this myself. I'd write them a letter like, you know, you yeah. suck, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you cry, whatever. You can burn the letter, whatever. Yeah. You don't mail it. It's not about whether they, you know, they don't need to be aware of your forgiveness, mm -hmm. but you have to let it out of you. It's going to block you. It's going to stop you in progressing in your life. Yeah. It's and, a huge factor. And that's what it did to my kid's dad yeah. because yeah. I saw it daily. So it was like the thinking and the old mindsets. And he thought that I was his enemy. And it was like, no, dude, you're still battling over there with your grandma. And I'm yeah. not, I, I'm, and there's things I'm sure I was similar, but I'm not her. That kind of yeah. deal. So yeah. It, paints your perception of everything and everybody, right? And actively, I'm telling you, I grew the most in my marriage. Right. Because there were times where he would just hurl insults and act false accusations and lies and all this stuff at me. And the knee jerk, he was looking for a knee jerk reaction. Yeah, right? of course. Yeah. The knee jerk reaction, I was not giving it to him. Because it was like, I had source right there. I had daddy telling me, I'm taking those insults. He's actually mad at me. Okay? Yeah. You yeah. stay out of the way, right? Yeah. So there were, I've, I've told, uh, my kids remember. Uh, so daddy would say, make him dinner. I'm being hurt here. Okay. Uh, he's like pitching, you know, darts at me. Cause really it felt like fiery totally. darts. It, and it right? is, it's energetic darts. Yeah. And that yeah, shit nice. hurt. Okay. Yeah. I'm over mm -hmm. here crying and it wasn't cause I was chopping onions. It was because I was being obedient. Source was saying, serve him. He's yeah. never been served. Yeah. Give him unconditional love. Now I learned that serving this man. Okay. That's how I navigated those waters and it wasn't right. easy. 
Right. There were days where I'd be like, daddy, are you, are you kidding? And then daddy would tell me, just watch, just trust me, right? Trust me. And then um, the most beautiful thing was at the end, I was able to show up for him a thousand percent. It is beautiful. Yeah. And somebody told me this after he, after he passed, somebody told me, they walked right up to me. I think, I can't remember who it was. Several people called me and they said, the way that you showed up for him is the embodiment of grace right. that you have shown, you know, right. you taught your children grace right. in that act. And I'm like, I just thought I was doing the right thing. Right. Right. You know what I mean? You progress to the next level of Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> we had a never ending game of Donkey Kong, right? Now and you're on level 92. And now <laughs> I'm telling you, I tell people, I am telling you the only thing that, the only thing that works is that unconditional love. And he right. told me this when we were going through the worst, one day he looked at me and he goes, what is it about you? He said, yeah, and this was like 15 years into the marriage yeah. of a 25 year marriage. He said, what is it about you? I don't get it. You know, I've tried to control you and I can't. Right. And I've tried to walk all over you like I did other people. Right. And he said, your unconditional love is tough. And I looked at him like, yeah, I have to. I have to, because that's the only way out of your hell is offering you unconditional love. Right. right. Now, now don't mistake, you know, cause Elena and I were talking about this the other day, you know, you start loving people unconditionally, then you're mistaken as a chump. Oh yeah. Know, or, or a pushover, right? A pushover yeah. or yeah. an enabler. Oh, yeah. huge difference, honey, yeah. because unconditional love does not enable <laughs> it's right. total opposite okay right. and so when to answer your question about how i forgave it was like yeah um it wasn't of my own strength it was me constantly going and saying daddy teach me because because yeah. you put I'm us not- together you put yeah. us together for a reason right and we, he and i have um past history of other lives but we had to uh we had to uh fix it here right and i'm telling you i told this i think i told this to elena or what i think i told this to all of them (laughs) and i remember that there was the one day before he transitioned that i went to see him it was just he and i our last time together was very private very sweet And uh, I remember there was a time that he, because he was in and out of, you know, he was lucid and then he was drugged up because he was in pain. So it was, you had to keep that going, right? But there was a lucid time, Sue, that we looked at each other and we knew that our contract was done. Yeah. And then he went two days later. I was just going to say you balance the karma from those past lives and all of this stuff yes. that happened. Yeah. Yes. And, so and it you, ha- yeah, you balance the karma. So you don't need to repeat the lesson again. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you've got the lesson this time. And we yeah. didn't say anything to each other. It was an right. understanding. Like, right. like now you get why I'm here. Right. That's why I showed up here because right. we had to make this right. Because yeah. the, 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 the healing is eternal and you have to pick at some point and go okay this is it you know and i, I this this time around I, I my kids grew up hearing me say and and this is before smarty my kids grew up grew up hearing me say i'm not coming back <laughs> this is this is it for me i mean yeah. I've, been, I've been several cycles around here and i can and i would tell my kids and uh I would tell them I'm I'm not I'm not coming back. This is this is it right here. If I don't get it right, I'm getting it right this time. Right, right. right. And then Smarty shows up on the scene going, This is the last cycle. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, the first time he said that, yeah. I was and then that calls me, Mom, did you hear what he said? I was like, 
oh my god yeah that, that's why i've been saying i'm not coming back because we're yeah. here we're not going yeah. anywhere. we're here we're not going anywhere we got work to do <laughs> exactly so. But yeah. yeah, and and I don't know. I'm I'm having a blast, you know. I it's, mean, it's been more fun recently, hasn't it? I can feel the energy like going fast, fast, fast. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. And, and like you, said, you know, people like people are, you know, people are scared, and and it's yeah. like you wouldn't be scared if you knew, if you really knew. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I mean, and sometimes I talk to you know, my kids are all in very interesting places because they're in this that we're all living in their 20s right now the 20s are interesting okay mind you there's a lot of change in your 20s you start yeah. from dependent to totally adult in 10 yeah. years <laughs> and, then and then you're really discovering who you are right yeah totally and so, and so i see them you know but it's cool because i see them having to like all of a sudden you have to rely on that foundation that was laid out for you as a, right. as a child is a right. strong foundation. But then on the other hand, you have to um, venture out there and find source for yourself because that's what it's about. You, right. you can't go on what mama said, or what grandma or my aunt, you got to go on your experience with him. Right. You know? Well, I mean, all of that is a foundation for your belief system, the way you behave, the way you yeah. react to things. It, it's necessary but being aware of patterns, I think, is is helpful because, you know, like I said, we, we talked about the lessons. You you have the lesson, you have the pattern. And if you can't see the pattern and then break it and improve where you are, that's the way you're going to grow. Yeah. And it's easier if you can do it proactively than have an event happen generally, oh. right? Yeah. When you have these events, it's because you haven't been paying attention back then. So the way the universe works is here's the lesson. And then you ignore it. And then it, here's the lesson. It gets bigger yeah. and bolder. And they keep up in the amps. They keep cranking it up until serious stuff happens. And you have to learn the lesson. Well, yeah. don't go there. No. It's way no. easier to do it when it's kind of tiny and in a neat yeah. little package, right? Yeah. I used yeah. to, I used to, a friend of mine told me this years ago, you know, that we all have to pay. We pay the piper, right? Some of us pay at the beginning. <laughs> Some of us pay in the middle. Some of us pay at the end, right? And I would tell my my kids that, and um, they're having to, to go through some major stuff in their twenties, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I went through it at my very beginning, right? right? And I would hate to be like really elderly and still not having learned from an event, right? Right. So I feel, right? Because at that point, yikes. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know that ha because my, my son was telling me the other day, he goes, so you mean to tell me that, you know, how you've always said that, you know, we, we all have to pay at some point. I said, yeah, he goes, so I guess it's not too bad. And, you know, in, in my twenties, I'm like, dude, I think it's really great. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, I don't know if it's like, we have to pay. I don't know if that's a good way to say it, but we have to learn those lessons or we end up, you know, retired alone sitting on the couch crying mm -hmm. to ourselves well, having well, learned nothing <laughs> whatever yeah what i don't i don't know like hit rock bottom whatever you want to call it yeah that, that point in your life where you go oh, i can't go on with this anymore what's going yeah. on you yeah. know and uh for some reason you know i've i'm thankful i've yeah. been thankful all my life because you know uh, even when I was younger, way younger, people way older than me would come up and tell me, you know, you're 20 something and you have the wisdom of like a 90 year old woman. And it's That's what like, I'm telling your daughter. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy, isn't it? It's great. <laughs> but that's old souls. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. that's also that. But I also you, I also know that it's, you know, accepting, you know, accepting what happened. Yeah. You, there's a surrender. You, you in, in part of forgiveness too, is also surrendering and going, you know what? Um, okay. I don't not totally, you know, I'm, I'm devastated and all this stuff and I might not understand it, but source, you got my back and I'm going to surrender to you and really trust right. that this was for my good. And you know what? Um, all things work together for the good of those who are, you know, called by right. souls according right. to his 
plan. Um, I've always, I've always known that to be very true. You know, right. it, it's because it, what, what happens when you resist and you fight and you. It, that's the thing. I think it's control. Like we think yes. we, it has to happen this way. Bing, mm -hmm. bing, 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 bing. And then it's the way it's supposed to be and we can go on. Well, it's never going to happen that way, no, right? Ever. No. And there's going to be events that happen. And so if you can be a little bit more at ease and just let things unfold and kind of roll with it as it goes, it's easier. Well, yeah. that's been my lesson because I'm not an unfolder. I'm a make it happen type of person. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, at this age, I'm finally starting to get it. Okay. Awesome. A few years ago, I would beat my brains against a cement wall yeah. to make what I want to happen the way that I wanted it to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm better now. <laughs> no, and that's yeah. awesome. Okay. But yeah. something, something about control yeah. that I was telling my son the other day, I said, honey, the minute you realize the contr control is an illusion. Yeah, totally. It totally. came over, right? Yeah. And yeah. I said, and I said, so, and he's over there chuckling. He goes, but it feels good. I said, yeah. <laughs> It's a, okay. It does. Yeah. We all want to feel like we're in control of something. And I said, look, honey, yeah. just control, control your thoughts, control your words, control your actions. That's all you get to control. Okay. Right. Everything else is bullshit. Right. You know, exactly. and, 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 and I, he's right. It feels good to think that you control something. Right. 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 But I noticed that um, when I was married, he was a control freak. And it was comical. It got to the point where I would just look at him like, honey, you really <laughs> think I'm, and, and I, it would floor me, right? It would, it would, and, and, and mind you, I've struggled with control issues. I did. Okay. So here was one of my biggest control issues was, well, I'm going to organize my life so <laughs> perfectly, <laughs> mind you, this was me. And get and everything team. done. So then I'm gonna, I yeah. can. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to go. It's going to be once linear is going to be a straight line yeah. and my life will turn out great. Right. Yeah. And so I'm going to do this at this age and that at that age and da, 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 da. And then by the time I'm done, I will be this, this rock star career woman, badass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I wanted for myself without source. Right. Yeah. You, that was my plan for me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then guess what happens? I started surrendering to him and he started showing me, you actually want kids. Mm. You actually want, you know, because there were so many things that in my control, right. I was, I was opposed to being a mom. I was opposed to doing everything that I thought had robbed me. Right. And it was like, no, actually, honey, if you had, if you, if you married, you know, somebody that source picked you, picked for you, I'll put it in those terms, right? If you do all the right things, right? right but right. those things weren't right to me because it was like, it was a jumble in my head. No, right. so I'm not going to let anybody control me. I don't want a man, <laughs> right? I don't want anything like that. I don't want a family. I don't want any of that. I want what I can control. Right. And then I started surrendering and it was like, mm, no, actually a surrendered life is so much better. Right. Right. You worry less yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. because you worry less. Well, also there's a confidence in yourself that you will be able to handle the issues that come up. Oh, okay. Yeah. An issue comes up and, uh, you know, sometimes I have to mull mull it over a little bit think about the options mm -hmm. you know I try not to do the knee-jerk reaction too much because that can get ugly mm -hmm. and um think it over and then you make the decision how do I want to handle this sometimes yeah. it's throw it in a pile and deal later but you know that's still a decision you know yes yeah, yeah. not doing yeah or, yeah um, yeah postponing so, whatever you want to call it uh, yeah. uh what's, that, what's that word not postponing but uh, when you wouldn't do your homework and you did it till you waited procrastination to yeah that's still, that's still that a is still a decision <laughs> so like so those people that are sitting around watching tv all day or whatever they do and they're really not living their life that's a decision yeah 
And I'm sad for them, actually. Yeah. You know? yeah. And we all need a little bit of downtime. But I'm just saying the people that are in fear, they're afraid to go out and do things or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're afraid to try new things, learn new things, whatever. I feel sad for them. Yeah. It's yeah. I'm limited universe out there. We've got so much stuff to try to do to explore. It's amazing. I want to. If it's okay with you, because um, I I'm kind of like I think we t I covered everything that I wanted to bring up unless <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to I wanted to wrap things up on this note. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of Dr. Carolyn Leaf? No. Okay, I'm gonna send you um some of her books. They're oh, amazing. Cool. Okay. She's one of these people that um, she's got a gift about and she's got a gift to teach people how the mind works you know, and just, it's, I'll, I'll send you okay. the book, really powerful, okay. but right. she talks about, she talks about that we were wired for love, and that we come here and learn fear, fear is yeah. learned, right, yeah. and she talks about, you know, when you look at somebody, and how they are traveling through life, it's very easy to point, pinpoint, if they are grounded in fear, or they're right. grounded in love, Right. It's very, and when I, I was reading her book, I was going, it's that simple. Yeah. It is black and white. Fear right. or love. Fear right. or love. When you're about to make a decision, a, an important decision, when you're up at any point in your life, you get to choose one or the other, honey. And one takes you down a, you know, thistle covered path and it's all jumbled up. And the other one, you know, and it's, it might not be certain, but then there's this light, this big right. ball of light, yeah. yeah, you know, lighting your path every step you take. Well, I think we were talking about being happy. So maybe we don't need to be rocket scientists or whatever in our lives. Okay. <laughs> we, we are what we are. Yeah. Okay, so good. Like we're moms, we're friends, we're whatever, but by being happy, we radiate that light and that hope. And, and all of the positive things to other people. Who would you rather be around? Eeyore or someone that's running around having fun? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, I, I feel, look, I, I feel like we've all cried enough. Yeah, that's we've true. All, we've all done our tears and our wiping of the tears and all this stuff. Um, I don't know in the book, and, and this is what's exciting to me about how we are in biblical times, okay? Because religion has painted such a crazy picture of what it's supposed to be right 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 um that the other day a few months back i don't know i don't remember when it was um i was reading through revelation and it talks about how he will wipe away all the tears he will wipe all all our tears will be wiped away right and i started going oh, we're in those times right because what are we being told every time Smarty posts? What are we being told, Sue? Celebrate. And not celebrate, to worry. Celebrate and not to worry. Yeah. So the other day when I saw that, I was going, our tears are being wiped as we speak. So exciting. Sue, our, our time of weeping is done. Yeah. It really is. I mean... Yeah. I mean, if you want to sit there and, and, and we're going to cry differently <laughs> when everything is, you know, is like at the celebration, we are going to cry differently because I mean, it's, it, we're going to be blown away by, you know, Look, looking forward to that and seeing those pink shoes. Yes. Yeah. I'm a shoe person. So when I saw those, I'm like, damn it. I want those. <laughs> And you know, it was so funny. Um, I'm in a yard sale, you know, and I'm like, okay. I see those shoes. And it was a little old granny selling that stuff off her table. Yeah. And she yeah. goes, baby, go ahead and try them on. I'm like, I am not worn. For me. No, I don't, you know. And and daddy was like, get them. I'm, cool. like, I'm like, okay. And I wore, and now I wear them. I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, that's so but No, cool. seriously, I, <sighs> time for crying is over. Yeah. The next kind of crying we're going to do is because we're going to be blown away like, oh, I didn't know that was you, girl. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to know what the transformer was. Like, I'm, I've been um, like, we've been talking, so I can't think it over. It's, I don't get a feel. But what was that transformer back there? Do like, OK, was it, yeah, the, the, the best thing that I can think of. Yeah. 
it looked like this huge being he was covered in metal yeah. and then at, it was kind of like a uh, kind of like a combination between a knight and those transformers because he was all shiny right yeah yeah and he How just cool. he was like like to me it looked like he was traversing I don't think he was walking but he was just like there and as soon as he I heard that we're just we're securing your, your premises <laughs> <laughs> what is that sound? Does that not sound like military talk? You're, you know, hey, no, he didn't say we're check. No, we're securing the premises. Yeah. And then I was like, and then a piece just, wow, you guys, holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know? Um, That's so oh, cool. oh God. Just when I'm about to shut up, I, daddy just reminded me. Destin has been, been in my life since I was a kid. Okay, now here's the crazy part. Uh, when I, I lived in Florida from 76 to 80. And in the middle of those years, we moved up to Panama City because um, my uncle got in the Air Force and we got stationed in Panama right. City. Right. And do you remember the time of the uh, Mariolitos when, all the, uh, when Fidel Castro was sending all the Cubans to come to the US? He emptied out his prisons and yes. he was sent by boatloads and they were yes. coming in to Miami into Florida. Yeah. So they set up refugee camps for these people. And my uncle was sent to one of these camps in uh, the vicinity of Destin. One of those beaches is called uh, Rose something, St. Rose, something Rose. Santa um, Rosa. Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. Yes. Yeah. So in that vicinity. And so my uncle was there for several months back and forth and like several weekends on several, on different weekends, we would go to see him, visit him, we'd get a hotel room and then we would hang out in Destin and, you know, just visit my uncle. Um, and when I went there last January for two weeks, prior to that, like a few months before that, I had a dream where me and my kids, the, all of us were there. In, in this like resort place, right? And um, I woke up and I told him, I said, man, we were like in Destin at this resort place and I described it. And my daughter was like, oh my God, that's really cool, mom, right? I go to Destin, um, we're going somewhere with smart. Oh my God. We're driving around and all of a sudden I'm like, and he goes, yeah, that water park over there is da 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 da. And he was talking about it, you know, how he's planning to do something with it and stuff. And I was, going, <laughs> I was like, that's but that's that park in my dreams. <laughs> it was like crazy, right? Like coming full circle. If that's you crazy. It is crazy, it's right? Great, crazy. I mean, even down to the silliest thing yeah. because I told my kids there was this yeah. place we used to go to when I was a kid during those visits to see my uncle. Uh -huh. uh, on the weekends it was called the donut hole right and I remember the first day I was there I'm in somebody's car and we're going somewhere I'm like oh there's a donut hole and they're like huh I'm like never mind <laughs> well you know I, I went I've been to Destin before too which is bizarre right because out of all the places on earth and I, exactly. I do remember the, the sand being so white and, and mm -hmm. pristine but um I don't I remember we I'm a breakfast person. We went to this place, another cracked egg or whatever. And I, I know I went to a Bass Pro shop because I needed to buy like a sweatshirt or something. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. So um, I don't actually remember where we stayed, but we walked all around the harbor. We, you know, it was really interesting, but. How long ago was that? At least 10 years. Um, I'm going to say maybe 10 to 12 years ago. I don't remember. And I don't even, I think I was there for four days or whatever. And it was beautiful, but I didn't know why I was there. You know, it wasn't, I didn't pick to go there. You know, is that interesting? That's yeah. totally interesting because look, yeah. I rem and I remember even telling Smarty, I remember when this place was nothing but beach. Yeah. Because now they got the resorts and the sand desert resorts. And now yeah. everything right, but I remember Sue. It was like little, little, little towns connecting each other, right? And that's the way and, I kind of wish things were again, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I feel, I feel like this. There is such a special 
energy there, right? That on one of those days that I was there in January, yeah, I was taking a little walk. Um, I left the condo where I was staying and I was taking a little walk and it took me down memory lane. Now, like I'm telling you, there was a lot of bad in my childhood, but it helped me to reconnect to, and I was reminded this part of your journey that you were in Florida, that those were good years. Just remember that yeah. it was probably yeah. my recollection like that. Yeah. And I broke down and I started crying. And then it was like, um, all I heard was, you know, nothing was lost. You're here. It's like full, full circle. Full like, circle. Oh, yeah. And I remember calling Elena all excited, like, oh my God, dude. And she, I never told, to really tell my kids anything about Destin because it was yeah. like, it was, you know, so much happens to us as children. Right. In our right. childhood, you go here, you go there, right? But standing there on that little path, I remember going, that's why, that's why I was there and here I am. It's like, like right now, Source is reconnecting all these dots it's right? so cool isn't it and yeah it's a beautiful thing man yeah yeah i think we could talk forever and we will talk again how's that yes, sound? this is yes. so interesting yes. so yes. thank you so much for all your great stories and your words My of pleasure. encouragement My i'm sure it's going to help many so thank you well i hope so yes ma'am right. uh, i love you i love your energy you're a beautiful being of light well thank you you too and i'm so glad we connected i'll talk thank with you soon eva okay take it easy right. bye bye, -bye.